Hello friends, we will now take up some solved examples from the previous year's uh, Arabata papers for class 5. So I will first give a question set and I will request you to first go through the questions, try doing them yourself and then look at the solutions if required and even if you've done them you can check them and uh, you may find some uh, different approach to take for those questions. So look at the solution only after you've tried these questions once. Okay, so I will uh, just go through the questions and uh, I will not be reading through them right now and we'll look at each of them in detail when it comes to the solutions. So uh, here are the questions. Uh, we have nine questions uh, taken up and we'll be discussing each one of them one by one to look at uh, you know, how do we solve these questions. Okay, so now let's move to the solutions. The first question says there are dash two digit numbers where the ten digit tens place digit is greater than the units place digit. So what we need to find here is we need to find how many such two digit numbers are there when where the tens place digit is greater than the units place digit. So let's see how do we do them. So uh, we start with putting a zero in the units place and then any of the other nine digits which is one to nine all of those nine digits can take the tens place so we have nine such numbers now if we put one in the units place then we have eight digits which are from two to nine other than zero and one why can we not have zero and one in the tens places obvious because this would be less than the units place digit which is against the what the question says so we have eight such numbers and we continue the, this till the units place is 9 and there will be no two digit number with the units place 9 and meeting the criteria of the question. So now let's see how many total two digit, two digit numbers do we have. It will be 9 plus 8 this 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and that makes it 45. So we have 45 such numbers which meet the criteria of the question. Let's now look at the second question. The second question says Priya got either 90 or 100 in each of her five maths test. Now the average of all the test is 98. We need to find out how many times did she get a 90. So now we know that Priya's average marks is 98 and we know that she's appeared for 5 maths test. So we can find out the total marks that she got by multiplying 98 with 5 and we get 490 as a total marks. Now she got 490 and so this clearly means that she got 90 only once. We have only one test where she got a 90. Let's now look at the third question. We need to evaluate this expression which is 1 minus 1 by 2 in brackets multiplied by 1 minus 1 by 3 in brackets multiplied by 1 minus 1 by 4 and so on till 1 minus 1 by 100. Now looking at first look at this tells you that we need to perform a number of multiplications. We will get number of fractions and we will need to do the a lot of multiplication because the standard rule of the uh, multiplication of fractions is that we multiply all the numerators and we multiply all the denominators. But let's see how do we do it in a simpler way because doing that would not be a right thing to be done here. So first simplify each brackets and then write it as a product of those terms. So we have 1 minus 1 by 2 equal to 1 by 2. Then 1 minus 1 by 3 equal to 1 by 2 by 3. And then we have 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4 equal to 3 by 4. And till so on. And continue till 1 minus 1 by 
100 gives you 99 by 100. Now we can clearly see here that whatever is in the denominator of the first fraction appears in the numerator of the next fraction. So if we see 2 in the first fraction is in the denominator and it's in the numerator of the second fraction. Similarly, 3 in the denominator of the second fraction shows up in the numerator of the third fraction and so on. So if we look at this pattern and then we can cancel out the numerators and denominators. We cancel out 2 with 2, 3 with 3 and so on till we cancel out 99 with 99. So we get the only thing which is remaining in the numerator is 1 and the only thing which will be remaining in the denominator is 100. So we get the product of this as 1 by 100 which is the final answer. Let's now move on to the fourth question. The question says that the product of digits of a three digit number is 288. We need to find the largest such three digit number. Okay, so first thing that we will do here is we'll find out the factors of 288. We'll write 288 as the product of its factors, which is 288 is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 4. Now, since we have to find 288 as a product of only three numbers, and these three numbers have to be one digit numbers because we have to finally find a three digit number. So, we are saying that 288 has to be written as a product of three one digit numbers. So, now if we try to get out of these five factors, if we try to get three by multiplying them, we cannot make a 4 into 4 multiplication because that will result in a 16 which is not a one digit number. So the only option that we left with is we multiply 3 with 3 and we get a 9. We multiply 2 with 4 to get an 8 and 4 as the other factor. So the three factors that we get are 4, 8 and 9. And the largest number that can be formed using these three digits is clearly 984. So 984 is the answer in this case. Now there's another way to approach this question. It could be that if we start with the highest digit from between from 0 to 9, if we take the highest digit which is 9 and try to see if we can divide 288 by 9, if it is completely divisible by 9 and we definitely find that it is divisible by 9. So we say that okay 9 is a factor of 288 and then we reduce it and we say find 8 whether 8 is a factor of uh, 288. And yes, we find that 8 is also a factor and we continue. And then we find 4 is the factor. So we can get the 3 factors in that way also. So these are the two approaches that you can take to solve this question. Now let's look at the next question. The next question gives us the 7 angles, the measure of 7 angles of an octagon. Octagon is an 8-sided figure, 8-sided closed polygon. So we are given seven of the angles and we need to find the eighth angle of the octagon. Now let's see how do we do that. The first thing that we need to know is what is the sum of the all the eight angles of the octagon, internal angles. So the first uh, important thing to know here is that the angles of any n-sided closed polygon is given by the formula n minus 2 multiplied by 180 degree. So using this formula for an oct octagon, we have n is equal to 8 and we get the sum of the angles of an octagon equal to 8 minus 2 multiplied by 180. And that comes out to be 1080 degree, 1080 degree. Now the sum of the 7 given angles is the simple addition of all of these and that gives us 925 degree. So we get the final eighth angle by subtracting the sum of the angles of octagon. Sorry, subtracting 925 from the total sum of the angles of the octagon, which is subtracting 925 from 1080. And we get the answer as 155 degree. Now let's look at the next question. Uh, we need to find the least number 
which when divided by 5, 6, 7 and 8 leaves a remainder 3 in each case but leaves no remainder when divided by 9. So let's see how do we approach this question. Since we need to find the least number which can be divided by 5, 6, 7 and 8 and can give us a remainder 3 so we'll first find out the LCM of all of these and that comes out to be 840. Now we add 3 to it because 3 is the remainder that we get when we divide this number by 5, 6, 7 and 8. So the least number which when divided by these numbers give 3 as the remainder is 843. Now let's check whether div this is divisible by 9 because we need to find the number which leaves no remainder when divided by 9. So for checking the divisibility by 9 the rule is that we need to find the sum of the digits of the number which needs to be divided by 9 and if that sum is divisible by 9 then the number would be divisible by 9. So taking the number 843 if we add the digits we get 8 plus 4 plus 3 which is 15 and 15 is not divisible by 9 so 843 would not be divisible by 9. So now we take the next multiple of the LCM of 5, 6, 7 and 8 which is 16, 80 and add 3 to it so we get 1683. Now we check its divisibility with 9. So adding all the digits we get 1 plus 6 plus 8 plus 3 which is 7. 1 plus 6 is 7 plus 8 15 plus 3 18 and 18 is divisible by 9. So this number is divisible by 9. So this is the answer to the question which is 1683. Let's now move to the next question. We need to find out the perimeter of the given figure. So this is the figure. Now first of all let's try to understand what will be the perimeter of this figure. So the perimeter will be what we, what I am drawing, drawing along with the figure. So it is this part of the first circle, then this part of the second circle and this part of the third circle and then this part of the line. So now let's see how do we find out the perimeter. So we know from this figure that the radius of the big circle is 4 cm. It is shown. Now the radius of the circle adjoining this circle we can find out by seeing that this side of the rectangle is 7 cm and out of this if we subtract if we subtract the radius of the big circle, we get the radius of the next circle, so which is 7 minus 4 equal to 3 centimeter. Then we can find out the circle of the small, the radius of the smallest circle. Again, doing the same approach, we have this side, the smaller side of the rectangle is 4 centimeter. From that, if we subtract the radius of this circle we get the radius of the smaller circle and which is 4 minus 3 equal to 1 centimeter. So now the perimeter of the figure clearly as we have drawn is given by 3 fourth of the circumference of the first circle plus 3 fourth of the circumference of the second circle plus 3 fourth of the circumference of the third circle and the line segment of length 7 minus 1. So that gives us 6 cm. So we add all of this to find out the complete perimeter. So we have 3 by 4 of the circumference of the first circle is 2 pi into r which is 4. So that is 2 pi r and that of the second is 2 pi into 3 and for the third it is 2 pi into 1. So and then we add 7 minus 1 to it. So we get adding these, um, simplifying this bracket, we get 8 pi plus 6 pi plus 2 pi, which is 16 pi. So 3 fourth of 16 pi plus 6. That makes us, that gives us 12 pi plus 6 as the perimeter of the given figure. Now let's look at the solution for the next question. We have a figure which is made up of five identical rectangles and this one side of the rectangle is given to be 1.8 cm. We need to find out the area of the final figure. Now from the figure we can see that the width 
of the three rectangles added together is equal to 1.8 which is the length of the original rectangle so that gives us the width equal to 1.8 divided by 3 that is 0.6 centimeter now the final figure has a width of 1.8 centimeter and the length of 1.8 centimeter plus a 0.6 plus another 0.6 so we have 1.8 plus 2 times the width of the identical rectangle so which gives 1.8 plus 2 into 0.6 that's 1.2 so 1.8 plus 1.2 gives us 3 centimeters so we have the dimension of the final figure as 3 by 1.8 centimeter rectangle so the area will be 3 multiplied by 1.8 which is 5.4 centimeter square let's now look at the solution for the last question we have a pie chart which represent the number of students in different activities which is dance has 35 percent of the students tabla have 12 percent drama has 20 percent and we need to find out we have 374 students in the band we don't know the percentage but we know the actual number of students in the band we need to find out the total number of students in the school so what we do here is that we can see from the pie chart that cricket occupies one fourth of the quadrant one fourth one quadrant of the circle which means cricket is 25 percent of the students so the four activities cricket dance tabla and drama have 35 plus 20 plus 12 plus 25 equal to 92 percent of the students so that means the band which has 374 students is actually 8 percent of the total students so we know that 8 percent of the total students is 374 so the total students will be equal to 374 into 100 by 8 that gives us now we can cancel it out we we cut this with 4 and we say this is 2 4 to and this is 25 and then we cut this again we get 180 7. so we multiply 187 by 25 and we get this is the final answer which is 4675 students friends i hope you enjoyed the session if you find it useful please like it and share it with your friends you can visit us at our cool smart learning website and post your queries there and please subscribe to the cool smart learning channel for getting updates on the new sessions thank you